Hello everybody and welcome to the Kenny Hack. i um, going to just try to give you a quick rundown. I uh, posted this project in the forums and it seemed to get a lot of likes and positive reviews. There were lots of people asking how to do it. Um, most of everything with this project is already in videos I've showed you. Uh, one video you're going to want to watch is printing images on the back of glass. Also, probably how to photo edit on your, like I do my photo editing on my phone. Um, and that's, this originally was all one solid photo. And I just went in and cropped out what I wanted to be the foreground in, on my phone. And saved that as one image. And this is was like a, I think this is a 10 by 13 frame. It's It was double glass. It's made to be a shadow box. Uh, this was about a $17 frame. It was actually kind of pricey. And the problem with it is this uh, the, the piece of glass that's the background was actually the front pane of glass. And it's glued in. I wasn't able to pull it out. So I had to burn the image with the, the piece of glass already stuck inside the frame. And it, it had enough clearance to where I was able to burn right onto the glass and it still missed the outer wear of the frame. So kind of burnt it in place. Uh, I probably could have tried to get some acetone, maybe something down in there to loosen the glue back up. I tried and tried to pull it out. I was starting to crack the glass, so I just decided to burn it in place. And like th this background wasn't the original background to the photo. This is just a stock ocean view I found on the internet and flipped it around and I probably could have found something a little more interesting with a little more cloud cover in it but I was mostly just trying to see uh, how this parallaxed image came out so that back paint is nothing different than what my video shows on paint you know engraving on back of glass so you can watch that video my uh, how to edit photos will show you how to crop out this image, save it on its own. Kind of the only really thing that's different on this that's a little trick that found in Lightburn that saves some time. Like this was the background image. I burned that first. So we can shut that one off. Now here was, this was saved as a PNG file. So there's no background to it. Now to get this onto the piece of glass, I got this 12 inch roll of masking tape. Now this stuff you can I found this on the internet. Uh, there's the blue brand. you can find it in white. Now that stuff there is really tough to peel off in one single sheet. How I had to do it, I got about two or three inches started, started taping it to the glass, and then started to roll it out to get it, and then con just constantly kind of rubbing the, the tape onto the glass, getting it to stick as I rolled it out. If you try to peel all that off in one big long chunk, I had a really hard time doing it without ripping the tape. So it seemed easier to kind of apply the tape as you rolled it down. Um, so that it, it took me probably three tries of trying to get that masking tape onto the piece of glass in one single sheet and even then I had a couple tears that I was able to patch over but luckily it was outside of where the image was getting burned and you can do it with smaller pieces you can you can mask the whole thing off with like a two inch roll but then every time you have an overlap area you run the chance that the paint is going to seep out through that little bit of overlap and kind of make a little like a little overhang edge so trying to use one single piece of tape kind of eliminates the chance of that um, to get that mask once your tape is applied you'll come here go to um, First, got to select it. Go to trace image, and then we're gonna get we're gonna move this slider bar until just just the outside edge is selected. And you want to get that as close to the edge as you can 
So keep working it down until you see it pop back into the interior. Or if it starts getting too rough, like right there, you can see that edge is getting a little rough. So now we'll raise it up a couple slider bars. Come on. Sorry, trying to film and click is not always the easiest thing. So right there, it's pretty smooth. It's following all the way around the edge, pretty tight. We're gonna call that good. And then that creates it into a line. Now you wanna save that as a different layer, um, which I've already done. So I've already created that line as another layer. I was just showing you how to do it there. Now, this layer here is what you're going to burn on, onto your mass piece of tape. So you're going to have this outline. But as you can see, it was probably a little bit outside the image. And this is what I didn't do on my, on my piece. I kind of figured it out afterwards. Is you go to Tools... You go to offset shape. Oop, I gotta select it first. So go to tools, offset shape, and you can have it offset inwards. Now, since it was a little bit bigger than what the image actually was, we wanna we wanna squeeze it in a little bit. And also when your laser goes and cuts out this outline, it's going to burn a little bit wider than what the image is too, just the width of the laser beam. So let's, I'm just setting it to move it a half a millimeter to the inside. And without zooming in here, so now you can see I got two lines. This was the offset it put in here in the solid blue. And the original line is on the outside. The outside one is selected. So I hit delete. And now we have just the offset outline. So this one here, if we turn back on the what's going to be the burned in image, you can see it's sucked in a little tighter to the original image. And that way, you know, it's a little tighter of a mask. So let's zoom back out. So on your front piece of glass, the first thing you're gonna do is mask it off and then you'll burn just this line image out. You'll burn that out of your masking tape. And when you line up your piece of glass under the laser, either start it off like where it's starting right on the very corner of the piece of glass and riding along the edge you, you got to set up some reference points because you're going to have to cut this out pull the tape off fill it in with the paint you're going to engrave with and then place it back let it dry and then place it back under the laser to burn in the image so you got to have your piece of glass in the exact same position as when you burnt this outline. So I zeroed in right on this bottom left corner of the glass and then made sure when it drew this line up this that I was tracing right along the left edge of the glass. So as long as I got this bottom left corner right in the exact same spot and that it traced up the left edge now I knew my glass was in the exact same position. And I mean, it, it's not going to be down to the might, you know, pixel level accuracy. If you zoom in here, you can see it's got a little bit of a black edge all the way around it. And like I said, when I ran this test one, I didn't shrink in that outside border. Like a lot of that margin is when it drew the original line and then the width of the laser beam as it cut it out and you can see like over here on the left edge 
on the tail it was a little bit further and it, it really doesn't hurt it kind of just makes make frames in the picture a little bit makes it stand out a little bit more uh, but after I did it then I got playing around and I figured out how to so offset that image inwards and I probably could have got a little bit tighter of a mask but other than that, you know, everything that's in my previous videos, if you've been following along with them and kind of watching the whole videos and understand how to do the images on glass, how to uh, crop out the background, and then save it as a PNG format so the laser burn won't try to burn anything outside the image, you could do as many layers of glass as you want. You'd have to build a custom frame and you know make a saw curve for each layer of glass and build it where you can slide in each pieces of glass it wouldn't be that hard to build if you if you're a bit of a woodworker and you can you can buy just plate glass from like hobby lobby i know i've seen it there i don't know if michael's has it to where you can buy just pieces of plate glass with no frame save yourself a little bit of money and just build your own frames um and you, you could, as like I was looking at doing like some other hunting uh, video or pictures where you'd have the background as one and then maybe the hunter as another layer and then maybe the animal in the foreground in the front, you know, that you could build up a lot of different three dimensional layers that would add to the parallax effect. Uh, and that's what this is called when it's, you can shift it and make it look 3D. That's just called the parallax so it, not really showing you step by step but hopefully if you've been watching my videos you kind of understand maybe now the steps you need to go to um like i said fine like when i bought this roll this was the last roll from the site that i got it from off of ebay uh they that they said this was their last roll available and it doesn't have you don't have to use this you can get by with this you're just gonna have to make sure everywhere where there's an overlap that you really rub that edge in and seal it off tight um, other than that it was it was pretty simple this was a really huge framework I'd have rather practiced on like a five by seven or something and kind of got my technique down a little easier on a smaller one this you know that back image even at the, I was running at about four thousand millimeters a minute and so that one took me about four hours to burn out that background image um, burning out the foreground here it took out like an, oh, an hour and a half so I mean I had had a lot of laser time into this thing um, definitely if you're doing this for a client these would be run pretty pricey to put that much laser time and that much effort in to get all the masking and all the digital work you have to do to the images is get them to prep uh, for me if I was doing something of this size I'd probably have to have around a hundred dollars and right now I'm nowhere near to where I'd even offer this I still got some figuring out to do on how to get the images a little better I just don't think I'm cleaning the glass off well enough when I'm done and that's why I'm, I'm getting little black streaks in there on times and I just don't think I've quite cleaned off the the soot after it gets done burning and so you know from a distance it looks pretty good up close you can see some flaws but um hopefully that's just a you know kind of help you out maybe on getting started and kind of how I did it it's a fun little project you if you're at Hobby Lobby I've found some other picture frames that might kind of be able to pull this off with you might have to make your own frames get your own plate glass and you know build it from there but it is just another little fun project to do and you can create a different effect i could i found a lot of different ones that have been a lot funner photos to do but uh figured if i got this one to turn out i could give it as a present for my dad here uh so it was just something to try. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, uh, and we'll see you on the next video.